Well, God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Let's give God some praise already. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. As you already know, I'm not Sister Crystal. I'm Elder Boss, Brother David, here, and we're excited that you're joining us here this morning for another worship experience. Amen. We thank God for another day, another beautiful day. The sun is shining. The temperature's right. We're just excited to be here on today. And on top of that is Youth Day Amen. here at First Church. Amen. Yes. And we want to say to all the youth who are watching, God bless you. We love you. We miss you. Can't wait till we gather again. Uh, we're going to go right into it. Uh, I was thinking that uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, right? Yes. And I was excited because some awesome things happened on this week. But when I woke up this morning, uh, I was thinking this is the day that the Lord has made. So I'm going to open the service with that song. Amen? Amen. And I want y'all to join me in singing, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made, oh, I will rejoice. Come on, rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. Now, Lord, we just pray that you 
Have your way in this service, Father yes. God. Father God, we pray that someone this morning gives their life to you, yes. Father God. Yes. Some backslider repent and yes. Lord, we dedicate their life to you, Father yes. God. Yes. Father God, we just ask that you breathe on us, inspire yes. us, Lord, yes. encourage us, yes. Lord. Yes. Those who of us who are discouraged, Lord, touch us, Lord, yes. where we need to be touched, Lord. Touch us from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, yes. Father yes. God. Yes. Father God, heal the broken places, yes. Father yes. God. Yes. Heal us, heal us in our bodies, Lord, our aches, our ailments, Father God. Heal us in our mind, Father God. Father God, just touch us, Lord. We know, Lord, that only you can do it, Lord. Lord, uh, create us creating us even more of a hunger and thirst for your word, Father God. Lord, you said those who hunger and thirst shall be filled, Father God. Now, Father God, at the end of this service, Father God, we're expecting not to be the same, Father God. Father God, we're soon to come back together, Father God, but just continue, Lord. Just continue to guide us and order our steps, Father God. Father God, we're not focused on anything else but you right now, Father God. Anything, any thought that is else self against the knowledge of you, Father God, we bring into captivity, Father God. Father God, because you're worthy, Father God. That's why we exalt you, Father God. We praise you, Father God. Father God, we know it's only because of you we made it this far, Father God. But Lord, we're focused on making it to the end because the race doesn't go to the strong nor to the quick. But to those who do it to the end, so Lord, we pray for the sick and shut in, Father God. Father God, we pray for those who are lonely, Father God. We bind the spirit of depression and suicide, Father God. We pray for the youth, Father God. Today is youth day, Father God. Father God, so bless the youth, Father God. Continue, Father God, to give them positive things to do during this time, Father God. We know an idle mind is the devil's playground, Father God. So put your put your word in our mind so we can hide your word in our hearts, Father God. Now bless the furtherance of this service, Father God. And Father God, just just do what only you can do, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my brother, for that beautiful prayer. We thank God. Let's move on to the scripture. I'm excited about the word of God. Amen. Coming out of Psalms 34. And it says, it's personal, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And deliver me from all my fears. Hallelujah. They looked upon him and were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. Amen. This poor man cried. <laughs> and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. I just read the first eight verses of Psalms 34. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, doers, and hearers of his most holy word. Let's give the Lord a hand and praise. Once again, we thank you for joining us. If you're just joining us, we thank you for joining us this morning on Facebook Live. Uh, we appreciate your attendance. Uh, I know you're in the comfort of your home. We hope that you're magnifying the Lord and giving him praise along with us. Uh, if you're joining us uh, with a conference call, thank you for that. Uh, they're asking that if you're on conference call, please uh, mute your phone to keep your phones muted. Today is Youth Day, and we celebrate our youth. Uh, at First Church, we keep our youth active and let them know they are part of the First Church family and a part of the church family at large. And we thank God for our youth. We thank God for our parents. I want to celebrate our parents. Uh, because if we hadn't been for the parents, there would be no youth. And we they want to celebrate our parents. I really want to take just a, a minute to encourage all the parents out there that are watching during this time. Listen, I feel what you're going through. I'm at home with four boys. And there's no school and things are shut down. There's not a lot for kids to do. So as parents, we're challenged to keep our kids 
uh, busy and, and, and positive That's because right. they feel this too. That's right. they, they can't express it, but they feel something's different going on in the world. And so as parents, it's, it's our challenge to keep our kids positive and inspired and motivated, right? To use this time wisely. There's a lot of things that they could be doing uh, to better themselves and to, to be more positive in who they are. But I want you to, to build them up, parents. Build them up. Uh, being in the house with four boys, yeah, I find myself having to build them up when I want to uh, do otherwise, criticize and rebuke. I find myself, I have to build them up. So we want you parents to do the same thing. We also want to acknowledge our graduates. We have some graduates. I know Sister Crystal already said it a few weeks ago. But we want you to know we haven't forgotten you. Right. Things are different. You're the class of 2020, and you have a very unique situation with your graduation. But we want our graduates to know that we appreciate you. Uh, the list that I have is Josiah and Tayshawn and Sister Sharika, the college. She has a high degree in college. God has some educated people sometimes. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for that. Even our brother uh, Dasani and then our brother uh, Elijah Banks Jr., yeah. how he graduated. We thank God for all of our graduates who have, God has blessed you to complete your education or really continue your education. So we want to reach out to you and celebrate you Amen. on today. We also want to acknowledge those who are having birthdays and anniversaries on this week. Uh, we have a first church. We want to say happy birthday and happy anniversary to you as well. Amen. If you would like to give to this ministry, whether you're a member or non-member, if you would like to give right. to the ministry of First Church, there are just a few ways you can do that. If you are a member, you can log on to www.firstchurch.com. That's www.1stcogic.com. I sort of bring a sign so you can see it. But you can log on and you can pay there. That's how I do it. It's very quick and it's very simple. Or you may come and pay in person. Uh, we have trustees in the back. You just knock on the door and put your offering in the drop box. And we, we keep social distancing. We're observing all of that. So you can, if you'd like to come down to the church, you can maybe bring your offering there also. Also, I want to remind you that you can catch this service later on at, on, on our YouTube uh, we had some issues this morning with Zoom. We do Sunday school on Zoom, and we had some issues this morning. And so those of you who usually tune into Sunday school, we were unable to do that because uh, we're told that nationwide, Zoom was having some technical difficulties. So hopefully we'll be set up again um, by next Sunday. Um, I'll be back with some other words and announcements then because I want to move the service right along. I'm excited about what's getting ready to happen. Uh, Sister Crystal's not standing before you today because she has a special offering to the Lord yes. and for you all today. So she's going to come in her own way with a praise dance. Let's celebrate Amen. Sister Crystal.
Praise Come on, let's him. praise Him. Amen. He is the sovereign God. And I think sometimes in our situations we forget that He is sovereign. Sovereign means He can do what He wants, when He wants, with whom He wants, and how He wants to. He's sovereign God. Thank you, Sister Crystal, Amen. for that beautiful worship and dance. Sister Crystal is not only a dancer, she is the director and the coordinator of our liturgical dance team here yes, yes. at First Church, and she does an awesome yes, job. Yes. They call themselves the Daughters of Sarah, yes. and I mean they minister yes, in yes. dance unto the Lord. That we thank God for her. Not only does she do that, she's involved in the community involvement. Yes. She keeps us, she keeps First Church in the loop with things that are going on in the community. Uh, she's an educator. Uh, she works at the university. Friends, correct? Yes. yes. I could go on and on and on and on uh, because it's important to know that the people of God, we do many things. That's right. Amen. God has blessed us to do many things in this world. We're more than just coming here clapping and singing. God has blessed his people to be productive citizens in Wichita. So we thank God once again for Sister Amen. Crystal. She has a little, a, a team of little girls. They call themselves the little daughters of Sarah. Amen. Little seven, eight-year-old girls who do the same thing. So it was just an awesome, awesome, awesome thing. I'm excited, yes. if you can't tell. Uh, not doing as good as, as Crystal no. can do, but I'm excited to just to be in the house of God. Amen. Yes. Yes. I thought about this week I was, as I was walking. I'm trying to pick up jogging, so I've been trying to jog along with my walking, and I was just going. Uh, last week, uh, when I walk, I'm like Elder Crowley. I just, it's, walking for me is a time of reflection. It's a time of prayer, a time of meditation, and it's a time of praise. And sometimes when I'm walking, I've been thinking out about how far God has brought me and where he has brought me to. And like Elder Crowley said, the, when the power of God just comes upon you, Sometimes you got to stop and get you a leap in. Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. Sometimes you got to stop and cut you a little step <laughs> while you're walking. Because when you think about the goodness of the Lord, and my thing is, I don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. right? right? I didn't earn all these things that God continues doing for me. So I praise God and I lift him up. And I will bless the Lord at all times. We are coming down, as they say down, we're coming up unto the important part of the service, which is the word of God. I thank God for my pastor and my friend, uh, Pastor Crowley, Brother Don, as some of you call him. I thank God for him. Uh, I thank him for being a true example of holiness. I thank him for being a friend and a brother. Uh, I thank him for being my pastor, and I, I see how God is leading him and directing him as he leads the church. I thank God for Sister Sherry, First Lady yes, Crowley, yes. my sister indeed. I could go on yes. about her, but I thank God for Sherry because she's been there for me many, 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 many. I've known them since their, son, their youngest son, Jacob, was born. That's over 30 years, yes. and I thank God they, they've been the same this whole time, so I appreciate them. But right now, without further ado, our pastor is coming with a word from the Lord. Let's say amen for Elder Crowley. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise wherever you are today and thank God for the ones that are here on today and we're looking forward soon for all of us coming back to church yeah. when the Lord give us that permission to do so. But we thank God for all the ones who are here on today and we thank God for you. Before we go into the word of God on today, I'm asking the parents, wherever your youth are, if they're not uh, at this time watching, would you please go uh, get them and have them come and tune in uh, and be with us um, this morning, we have something we want to say to our youth today. Today is Youth Day at the First Church of God in Christ, and we thank God for our youth. And we try to be very active here at First Church, and we're praying and asking God to give us other uh, things that we can do with our youth to draw our youth uh, to the Lord. And then once they come to the Lord, that they will maintain their salvation. We want the young people, and I'm going to speak on it in a few minutes, to know that you can be saved at a young age. And enjoy the Lord. The saved life can be an exciting life. It's all up to you. And we're going to talk to you about that this morning. Amen. This morning, we're going right into the word of God on today. And the subject is the advantage of giving God your life while you're young. The advantage of giving God your life while you are young. And it's from Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. It says, remember now. 
the creator in the days of your youth, while the evil days come not, knowing the years draw nigh when you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. I thank God for the praise dance that Sister Crystal did on this morning. Amen. And it took my mind to what God is saying this morning. God is an awesome God. Yes. He is the creator of all things. And it's a blessing when our young people can know that while they're young. But the only way they're going to know is we have to tell them. Yes. Parents, you have to share with your young people that they didn't just come here by themselves. They were created. And they were created by God. And they need to know their uniqueness. They need to know their beauty. They need to know who they are in Christ. Everything that is, God created. All the things that we enjoy, God created. As uh, Ella Boss was saying this morning, I do love to uh, run outdoors and I like to do activities outdoors. And my wife and I, we walk together. And I enjoy God, the creation. I enjoy when I look at the trees, when I look at the clouds. When we used to live in California, I looked at the mountains. All of these things that we see with our eyes, I love the palm trees. Amen. So when I see these things, they didn't just come. Right. God created everything that we see. The Bible said he spoke and the stars and the moon and the sun and these things came into existence. But then when it came to man, he created man. He made man out of the dust of the earth. So we want you to remember the Lord. And the best time to rem remember the Lord is while you are young. Remember now the trade in the days of your youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. Our years, as you, you may be young now, but you're not going to always be young. We're going to get older. We're getting older. You've seen Ella Boss, myself, a few years ago, we were young. Amen. We were young, but now we're not as young as we used to be. You're going to get older, and the best time to give the Lord your life is while you are young. Listen to this. It says, do not let the excitement of you cause you to forget your creator. God wants you to enjoy life, but in enjoying it, don't forget the creator. Don't forget God. God wants you to honor him, to respect him, to reference him, to know that he is God. And the best time to do it is in your youth. Before you get old and say life have no is not pleasant anymore. I look back at my life and I thank God for it. And I thank God that I gave my life to the Lord when I was young. As I reflect on my life, I am so glad I gave my life to the Lord while I was young. As a youth, there were many times I thought I was missing out and the world was having all the fun and I was left out. Here at First Church, I try to be very honest. I got saved very young. I, I received Christ at eight years old. And I love uh, love being saved, and uh, we was dancing and we was shouting. It was exciting, especially going to church during those times. I was so excited. You went to church and we just praised God. We had our own party at church. But when we left church, the life has to be lived. Amen. Amen. And there was times, if I be honest with you, when I seen my friends having fun, my friends was going to the dance, especially when I got older. They were doing the things that they were doing. And the church taught us very strictly back then. They taught us the word of God. And there's a lot of things in the Pentecostal church and the holiness church that we could not do. And I found out as I got older, there were some things that would have been all right to do. But they felt like even if it appeared to be evil, they taught us not to do it. So there's was, there was very few things that we could do. So in, in that, many times I found myself bored. Many times I found myself sitting by myself. Many times I found myself being alone. And so I didn't enjoy all the time. And I looked at my friends and looked like they was having so much fun. But as I uh, got older and I began to read God's word and study the word of God, I found out that God's word says that uh, the pleasures of sin only last for a season. And Moses said that he would rather suffer with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. I do not teach there's not fun in sin. I don't teach that. I do not teach that there's not pleasure in sin. There is. But it only lasts for a season. There's consequences that come with the sin, whatever the sin may be. And sin is fun. Many things that God told us not to do, flesh wants to do it and will do it. One thing one of my brothers said here at the church, uh, God has shared with us, uh, what not to do. And some things that we don't understand God has told us not to do, young people. I'm talking to you today. 
You may feel like, well, I don't think this is wrong. I don't feel like what I'm doing is wrong. I don't feel like having sex is wrong. I don't feel like if I'm uh, smoking me a little marijuana, I don't feel like that's wrong. It's not hurting nobody. I don't feel like well, however you feel. The thing is, there's some things to us it may not be wrong, but it's wrong because God says that it's wrong. Then also, as you get older, young people, you may not realize it now, but as you get older, you will see why some of the things that God has shared in his word for us not to do, you understand why God told us not to do it. Amen? Amen. With the drugs, with the sex, with the alcohol, these are just a few things, they bring consequences. Been uh, with the wrong friends, doing the wrong things, and it may be fun, but it brings consequences. It brings imprisonment. It brings addictions. It brings pregnancy before time. It brings diseases. Many of these things that God has shared for us not to do, the consequences is the reason why God told us not to do it. He already know. And the Bible said the wages of sin is death. There's pleasure in sin. And then when the flesh cannot have what it wants, it suffers. Can I share with you, young people, and be honest with you? The Bible said when you suffer in the flesh, you cease from sin. So that means that some things that our flesh won't, when we tell, tell flesh no, flesh suffers because it wants what it wants. It goes, the flesh goes through withdrawals. Amen? Just like an alcohol and a, a drug addict or whatever, whatever it is that you like to do that God told you not to do, when you cannot do it, you go through withdrawals. Can I be honest? I do too. <laughs> but the Bible said when we go through the withdrawals, and somebody may say that's not the right word to use, but I'm being honest with you where we all can understand. Right. Whatever you want to call it, you can call it. But when you go through those withdrawals and you can't have what you want, then the Bible said your flesh suffer. Your flesh suffers. But guess what? You cease from sin. Let's talk about eating. There's nothing wrong with having apple pie. There's nothing wrong with having uh, 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 banana pudding. There's nothing wrong with these things. It's not wrong, it's not wrong with having a pop every now and then. Well, but the, what makes it wrong is we want more than one bottle of pop. Flesh is never satisfied. Flesh always wants more. If there's a slice of cake, there's nothing wrong with a slice of cake. Listen. But when that cake is good, can I be honest with you? I want two. Listen. I want three. And then later on, the consequences of what? My stomach ache. Listen. Why is my stomach aching? Because not of the one slice, but that two, three, and let's be honest, sometime four. So the thing is, but flesh is never satisfied. So you have to tell flesh no. There are some things we can do, but even in those things, it has to be limited. And God's word is, we, will not, we don't have time to go into all the details on today, but I challenge you, not just the young people, but all of us, read God's word. Study God's word. If God says no, find out why God says no. There are some times you can find the answer in God. Many times you can find the answer. There's some things you may not find the answer. God just said no, and it's no. But there's many things, there's a reason why God says no. He don't say it just because I'm God and I can do it. He said it because he wants you to have life and that more abundantly. So remember uh, the consequences that come along with your sins. God wants you to have quality in your life. Many people have riches. Many people have prestige. As uh, Ella Boss was sharing earlier, uh, Sister Crystal, she has many accomplishments. But thank God that she is saved and she loves the Lord. And she tries to keep those things in perspective. Yeah, she does. We're trying to keep things in perspective. There's nothing wrong with being rich. There's nothing wrong with having plenty of money. There's not, nothing wrong with having your name and where everybody honor you and respect you because of the accomplishments that you have made. But you have to keep everything in perspective. If not, you will not have the quality of life. This morning, I could share a few names with you, which I will not do because I don't expose no one. But I want you to think for a minute of people that you know that's very, very famous they have a whole lot of money. Some are still living and some have already passed. They have all the money. Their name is known everywhere you go. They have everything you could desire or want, but they're very unhappy. They don't have family. They don't have really genuine friends. 
They cannot sit down at the table and enjoy uh, life with their friends because the ones they sit down at the table are thinking of ways that they can get their money or get what they have or they don't love them for who they really are just for what they have. All of these things mean nothing if we don't have it in perspective. So God wants us to have quality of life. And that's why I thank God for being saved because the things I did not do when I was younger, when I finally made up my mind to surrender myself totally to the Lord and give my life completely to him, I have quality of life. I say to First Church all the time, I'm not planning on dying today, but we don't know. But if I was to pass today, I can look back at my life and I can say, Lord, I thank you because I have had quality in my life. I have a wonderful wife who loves me for who I am. I have shortcomings. I have things that she may not really care for, but she loves me for who I am. She loved me when I didn't have very much, and now we have a little bit. She still loved me. She loved me for me. I thank God for my two sons. I can write a list. I thank God for my church. I thank God for real, genuine friends. Many people have, they call friends, but they're not really genuine friends. It's a blessing when you have real friends in your life, friends that love you and are there for you, that will pray with you when you're going through even this coronavirus. It means so much. We cannot, we have to have social distance, but it means so much to know that somebody loves you. The receiver texts and say, I just want you to know I'm thinking about you. Amen. Amen. So the quality of life, it's a blessing when you can sit down at the table and you can eat with your family. Or even you may eat, uh, be by yourself, but you can sit down and you can eat a meal and you can enjoy it because you don't have the pressure and the tension and the stress of life that life can bring because of the things that you have done, the things that you regret. You have quality of life. So it means so much to have quality. And I could go on with that on and on and on. Quality. And I'm going to say what the Bible said. Uh, read Ecclesiastes. And Solomon is one of the wisest men that ever lived. And Solomon, in his time, uh, Reverend Welch is with us on the day, and he's a Bible scholar. In Solomon's time, he had all the money. He had the women. And Solomon experienced both sides because when he first came to the Lord, he said, Lord, I have nothing and all I want is you. I'm not asking you for nothing. All I want with you. All I want is you. And God said, because you didn't ask for anything, find, uh, riches and fame and all this, I'm going to give all that to you. So Solomon went for many years. I don't know how many years, but he went many years serving the Lord. But as time went on, Solomon's heart left the Lord. And he began to mess with those women that God told him not to mess with. And he got all caught up with them. And he found himself doing things that he shouldn't have been doing. He left God for a season. When you read Ecclesiastes, you'll find Solomon, these are the words that Solomon said. He said, of all these things I had, he said, I find it to be vanity and vexation of spirit. Read your Bible. I won't give you the scriptures, but you read Ecclesiastes. He says it over and over and over. He even talks about the different things that he had, all of this stuff. But he said all of it is vanity and vexation of spirit. That's why he said, remember the Lord while you're young. Give your life to the Lord while you're young so you can miss out on all of these things that sin will bring. He started out right, but he did not continue. But he finally came back to God, and this is what I'm trying to get to. Solomon says, Sister Crystal, that when you can sit down, and he said, the Bible said herbs, which we call greens. He said, when you can sit down at the table and you have your family and your friends and you can eat some herbs and enjoy the fellowship with your friends and your family and you have God in your life, he said that, I'm paraphrasing, he said that is living. First have a relationship with God and then when you have that, you have quality of life. Not all the money, not prestige, but you have God and you have people that really love you. That means so much. So living a safe life, young people, can be excited. It, you can have quality in your life. We must realize it is an advantage in living safe. You can be saved, as I said, from addiction and drugs and alcohol and sexual sins and other strongholds that come that will or not allow you to be free. There may be someone I'm talking to on today who have a stronghold. Whatever that stronghold is, God can free you from it. But you have to be willing to let it go. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, it may not be easy. There are times that God delivers us immediately. 
You come to the Lord, Lord, forgive me of my sins, Lord, come into my life, and God just comes in, and those things just go. There's other times we have to go through the process. Don't ask me why it's that way. That's the way it really is. There's some things God delivered me. I'm talking testimony of my own testimony. He delivered me immediately. But there's other things I've had to go through the process. And going through the process is not always easy. But he said, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if you allow the Lord, God can deliver you from that stronghold. He can give you power over it and take this scripture on the day and say, whatsoever born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory to overcome the world, even our faith. So if you put your faith in God, God can deliver you from whatever stronghold you our young people may be going through. And our young people are going through many things that they may not share with nobody. May I pause right here? Young people need somebody that they can go to. A pastor, a mother, a father, a friend, somebody that they can go to and will not be judged, but they will sit down and let them know that yes, what you're doing is wrong, which you already know. But let's talk about how we're going to get delivered from this thing. And so you can have freedom in your youth. You can enjoy your youth because if you do not enjoy your youth, you'll find yourself doing things that you should outgrow when you're older. That's why I got all these older people around acting like they're still five years old because they miss their youth. Let young people be young people. And young people, you can be saved. And now in the church of God in Christ, now I don't church of God in Christ in many of our churches, you can have fun. We try to have activities. We try to find things uh, that you will enjoy. We try to keep up with the time so you can enjoy the Lord while you're young. So there's no excuse for you not being saved. But remember this. Whatever you, we say you can do this, you can do this, you can do that. But it's always going to be something you can't do. And that's what flesh wants to do. The very thing that God said don't do. But when you don't obey God and do it God's way, many age before their time. And they have early deaths. I'm not a young, young man no more, but I feel like I've lived as long as I have because I changed my life and I gave my life to the Lord at a young age. And not only I'm enjoying life, but I have quality. There's a lot of people that still live and they live a long time, but they don't have quality. But because of Christ, I have quality. Christ said, I come that you might have life and that more abundantly. And so many died before their time. Many of my friends I came up uh, in school with, and I'm not judging them. We were friends, and I loved them. They loved me. We used to have a lot of fun. They went the other way, started doing things. I made up my mind, I'm not going to do that. So what, therefore, it put me alone, Sister Crystal. For many years, I had to walk alone. But now that I look back, I thank God for it. Most of them, a lot of my friends are gone. And some days, it makes me sad. But it's all in the lifestyle, many times, that we live. So God wants you to have quality in your life. And he don't want you to have an early death. I don't want to die with until it's my time. When it's my time to go, I want to be ready. But I do not want to leave here before my time. But I can cut my days if I do not give myself to God. And even though I'm older, I still have to give myself to God daily. God wants us to, to have uh, abundant. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in hell even as your soul prospers. God is concerned about our physical and spiritual well-being. God is not just concerned just for the spiritual. He's also concerned for the physical, the emotional, the mental. He's concerned about all of you, your body and your soul. As a responsible Christian youth, I'm talking to you on today, you should not indulge in simple acts. Well, care for your, but care for your physical needs. Take care of your physical needs, but do it God's way. Get in God's word. Go to Sunday school. Sunday school. Go to YPW. Go to the youth uh, uh, things that your church has for you. Learn of God. Find out the things that you can do and yet enjoy life. Take out time and take care of yourself the right way so you can extend your life. The Christian life is a beautiful life, but it is a disciplined life. You hear in the Bible, it said, bring, you bring your body under subjection. The Bible term said that we have to die daily. What that means is you have to discipline this flesh. You cannot do it of yourself, young people, but through God, 
through his spirit, through the word of God, you can be an overcomer. I'm a witness. It can be done. But you have to discipline your body according to God's word. And I didn't write this down, but uh, in uh, Psalms 119, David said, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed to the word of God. Not only knowing God's word, but doing God's word, walking God's word, living God's word. And it can be done as, as a young person. As I said, I'm not young now, but when I was a younger saint, the Lord taught me how to live a saved life. So it can be done, but you have to discipline this flesh according to God's word, which is the Bible. So you can be your best for yourself, first for yourself. I'm almost finished. First for yourself. You're doing it for yourself. Not for this one, not for that one, for yourself. Not for mama, not for daddy. There comes a time you and it has to go beyond that. For many years, I served God because of mama. I served God because my pastor said this. I served God because the missionary said this. I served God, but it came to the point where I had to make up my mind, I'm serving God for me. The benefits that I will receive in serving the Lord, not for somebody else. Why do you have to come to that point? Because everybody else may walk off. If they walk off, are you going to remain faithful to God? So you have to do it for yourself. And then you can be a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. And then you can do God's service. I encourage you to take advantage of the life God has given you. Enjoy it. Love it. According to God's word. Everything that God tells us not to do, I guarantee you he'll give you something better. I don't dance like the world. I don't do the things of the world, but I have a dance. And I feel like my dance that the Lord has given me, can nobody dance like I can dance. Amen? Amen. We're not in competition because God will give you a dance. God will give you a praise. God will give you a wife. God will give you things that you desire in life. But let God give it to you. Amen? Amen. So serve God. Give God your life. Walk with God, and he will give you quality in life. Read your Bible. Follow the teachings of the word of God and you will find the quality of living a saved life and you will be blessed both here on earth and in heaven and you will have great success. Not only in heaven, but here on earth, you can enjoy this life. You, again, give your life to God while you are young. Take advantage of all the things that God has for you. We have benefits in living saved. I may bring a message. We have benefits in living saved. We have joy unspeakable, full of glory. We have a peace that passes all understanding, that keep our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. We have a love that we can't comprehend. Many days I said, Lord, why do you love me so much? There's no love like the love of God. As I say so many times here at First Church, we say to you, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. And you can have the same testimony. Before I take my seat, and maybe somebody on today, before Ella Boss comes back, maybe somebody today that won't accept Christ in your life. You said, I have sinned. I'm tired of what I'm doing. And it may be that one that may say, I'm a good person. I'm doing everything right. I don't need to be saved. You still have to be born again. And then if your life is rich, God would make it richer. If your life is good, God would make it better. Amen. And so if you would like to accept Christ in your life, if you repeat the prayer as I pray this prayer on this morning, and if you believe that Jesus died, he was, up, he was up on the cross, he suffered, he died, he gave his life for you. If you believe the third day he was raised from the dead, oh, and after so many days passed, he went back to heaven to be with the Father. And then he said, you, you won't be comfortless because the Father going to send back the Holy Ghost in my name. If you believe the report of the Bible and what the Bible said concerning Christ, then you can be saved. If you confess your sins, be sorry for that that you have done and confess that God is God and Jesus is his son, that he was raised from the dead and he went back to be with the Father. If you believe this, God will come into your life. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, come into my life. Wash me. Cleanse me and make me whole. I realize I cannot say I can only be saved through the blood that you shed on Calvary and the life that you gave that I might have life more abundantly. So, Lord, I'm asking today that I may receive that life. Lord, I'm asking today that you forgive me of all of my sins. But, Lord, you know there are many and you know all of my sins. And I give them to you on the day. 
And Lord, from this day on, I want to walk with you. And Lord, I cannot do it in myself, but I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. So Lord, I open my door, I let you in. And from this day on, I'm going to walk with you. Lord, I thank you for that the minister have said. I believe the report. I receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you in his love. Let's say amen for that word. Amen. amen. Thank God for our pastor speaking to the youth on today. And I just want to say ditto to everything that he has said. I too got saved at a young age. I was 11 years old when I gave my heart to the Lord. And I'm not going to tell you that everything has been easy. But I thank God I've had, I feel like I've had a beautiful life. And the thing is, young people, we want to encourage you. Just give your life to the Lord. What the enemy does, he'll tell you, well, what about tomorrow? What about next month? What about this? What about that? Don't worry about the what ifs. Just come to the Lord as you are. Give him your heart, your life. God knows exactly what to do with you, how to do with you. So don't let the enemy keep you trapped with that. I'm scared to be saved because da, 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 da. Just give your life to the Lord and the Lord will walk with you as you walk along this road. So we thank God again. Pastor, thank you for that word. Uh, I'm told to remind all of our viewers and our listeners who want to stay in the legal boundaries here that the recordings that you hear or the tracks that you hear, the song that Sister Crystal danced to, we do not own the legal rights to those to that music that you hear in our services. We want to stay within the legal boundaries of that. So we want to make sure that you uh, are aware of that. We also want to thank you again for listening and, and tuning in and joining us. Hopefully you were joining us in our service. We want to remind you that uh, we now have started our Bible study, a Bible band uh, on Zoom on Tuesdays, Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m., I believe. Uh, we also have morning manna. First Church has a lot going on. We have morning manna here. Uh, the pastor is sharing the word of God again on Tuesdays and Friday mornings at 6 a.m. I know you're up that, at that time getting ready for work or whatever you do. So join morning manna. Uh, I look at it sometimes when I'm getting ready. Uh, listen to the pastor and thing. And what they do, they have prayer before that. You don't see that part, but they have prayer before the pastor gets up and gives the morning matter. So Monday, uh, Tuesdays and Fridays for that, uh, we have Sunday school uh, on Zoom uh, every Sunday morning at from 9.30 to 10. Uh, we have a lot going on here at First Church. Amen. So feel free to join us on <laughs> any of those uh Technology pieces. God is best us with technology, so we might as well use it. Amen. Amen. Still to reach the people. Um, I don't think is there anything else I need to say. Again, thank you for participating. Uh, the trustees are still in the back if you care to come in and share your tithing offering with them. Um, without further ado, we love the Lord. I thought about the song that says, In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Tell me who can stand be for us when we call on that great name. Help me say it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus precious Jesus. Jesus, we have the victory. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome week. And we love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.